An American city torn in two over a Chinese company buying some of their land with plans for that land. We went to the northern Midwestern city and spoke with some people. Now you will hear from them directly. This is the record. Grand Forks, North Dakota, a town of nearly 60,000 people. It's been torn apart, not because of scandal, not because of school board issues, but because of a land purchase. A company based in China bought more than 300 acres of farmland. Why? Well, that depends on who you ask. The company, and some say, to build a wet corn mill. Others say, for sinister reasons. So we went to Grand Forks this weekend to investigate, to talk to the people. It was bitter cold, but the reception we received was so warm. We spoke to those in favor who say this Chinese company owned wet grain mill will create jobs and be good for the community. Those opposed talk about pollution, water usage, and fears that communist China, home to this Chinese company, will use this facility for espionage purposes. They point out that this site where the Chinese company plans to build the plant is a mere 15 miles from the Grand Forks Air Force Base. We spoke with city council members, the city administrator, a local farmer, and many others. We even went to Darcy's Cafe, famous for cinnamon roll pancakes. At the cafe, we had Sunday breakfast with Craig Spicer, no relation to Sean. He's the owner of a trucking company, and he's 100% perfectly clear as to what his thoughts are on the matter. What's the story on this China thing? I mean, how much of it is not liking China buying something here, and how much of it is it environmental or noise or odor, do you think? Well, I would say the biggest issue is the Chinese people, or the Communist Party, I should say, not the Chinese not people. And we had to go down that road first because they were telling us the city council tried to use every tool they could to shut us down. So they said, oh, it's racist, it's this, it's that. It's nothing to do with that. No way. The bottom line is, it's a communist country. They're not our friend. They're, they're coming to get all of our technology. They want everything they can get out of our country, and they, they're just, it's not right. You know? so, Why do you think the city council thinks you know, differently, that it's okay for the Communist Party to come in and buy this. I wake up every day and I ask myself that same question. And every every week and the following week, we undig, you know, we, we come up with more information from different sources. See, that's, that's what's on our side is. We've been here all our life. The people that live in this town, they know what's going on. You can't hide it. And earlier this year, some Grand Fork citizens decided that there should be a citizen's vote on this matter. They circulated a petition to get that vote, and about 5,000 people signed on supporting the idea of a vote. 5,000 signatures are far more than required. However, the city ruled against the vote. A Grand Forks auditor said there were issues with the petition's formatting. And today, a group called People for the Vote say they deserve a voice and announced they are appealing the denial of the citizen's vote to North Dakota's Supreme Court. The Fufang project is also facing questions from the federal government. As a result, the city says the project is now in a, quote, pause. This pause will last until the Interagency Review Board in Washington, called CFIUS for short, reviews the matter and determines if the pro project poses a national security threat. North Dakota Republican Senator Kevin Kramer joins me. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Greta. Thanks for visiting Grand Forks, by the way. <laughs> it was great. I got to tell you, those pancakes at Darcy's are to die for. Um, anyway, <laughs> and, they're very, and people are lovely on both sides of this dispute. Um, tell yeah. me, where are you on this? Should, should, this, should this company be able to build this uh, wet corn uh, uh, mill? I believe they should not. Both Senator Hoven, my North Dakota colleague, who's a, a, importantly a defense appropriator, and, and myself, I'm on the Senate Armed Services Committee, we both believe strongly that it, that uh, Grand Forks should reject this uh, opportunity and look look somewhere else. And we're more than happy to help them find a better a better tenant for that land than uh, than than Fufang and the CCP. Well, time what struck me as I did a little research, Senator Mark Warner, who is chair of the Senate Intel Committee, and ranking right. member Senator Marco Rubio, they're both opposed to it. But then when you talk right. to the city, I mean, the people who they say they've gone through all the records, they look through everything, and they just don't see this risk. 
Well, if you look beyond the records and look at the record of the Chinese Communist Party, look at their recent purchases over the course of the last decade, if you just look at our over-reliance on the Chinese Communist Party for things like pharmaceutical supply chain, food supply chain, they already own a good chunk of a, on a very concentrated meatpacking industry in the United States. And, and supply chain of critical things like food, like pharmaceuticals, like critical minerals, these are these are these can be weaponized. And and the behavior of China over the last several years, and certainly the last several months, is such that I think we should, I've always been, for a long time anyway, been in the uh, the camp that thinks we should have a strategic decoupling from China so that we're not so reliant on an adversary. You know, it's, it's interesting that, say, you know, I have to be careful with myself. It's not the Chinese people. Um, it's right. not Chinese Americans. They're as much American right. as I am, you know, those who come from That's China. Sure. Um, and it's, uh, and, and this is a Chinese company um, it, but do you see a Chinese company as being the same thing as communist China government? I mean, do they, are they so intertwined that you can't separate them? I think that's exactly right, Greta. I mean, they have obviously a very controlled economy on purpose. Uh, the, the, uh, the emperor for life, uh, Xi Jinping, is, is a, has a heavy hand and is a heavy-handed leader. The, the intertwining between the CCP and, and its economy uh, is such that they really are one and the same. But I think you have to even look a little deeper. If you look at the, the, the CEO, the, the president of Fufeng, um, is in fact a very active member of the CCP, and he's received high recognition for for being a model member of the CCP. So it's not just, you know, one sort of fringe element. This really is very intertwined. But again, I think you have to look at the recent behavior as well. Um, they steal everything they can get their hands on. They steal our technology in lots of forms. In fact, they provide a lot of the technology to us that they then use to steal from us, as we have learned, um, you know, from its from its 5G uh, components and things like that. And, and Huawei, the most obvious example. So we're just, I think we're just foolish to continue to give them access to critical supply chains like egg Agriculture. And that's before we even begin about the sensitivities to the Ground Force Air Force Base. Uh, we're waiting to hear from CFIUS, which is, of course, is a group of, of right. government agencies, including Department of Defense, Department of State, um, and others. Um, but have you heard anything from the Air Force, the Air Force Base there, or anything from the Department of Defense that's, you know, that's raising a flag with you? Have they said anything, or are they just silent on this so far? Well, they're largely silent publicly, and they have to be now once the CFIUS project or process kicks in, and they've been involved in that. Um, although I will tell you, as you know, maybe you haven't seen, but we actually asked the question. Senator Cotton asked the question of Secretary or the uh, Chief of Staff of the Air Force, General Brown, on the record about if he had any concerns with Fufang. His only response was, "I'd rather discuss that with you in a in a classified setting." Uh, that's you know, before you go to the classified setting and learn what his concerns are. That answer alone is a concern. We've heard from uh, people within the industry as well as from within the Air Force and, and other agencies that they are concerned about the proximity of this facility. But remember, that's not their choice. It's the local. It's a local decision along with the state that, that's providing some of the uh, incentives, for example, to attract this opportunity. And, and to your point, there are people on both sides that are really good people, and I mean that literally and, and sincerely. Um, I just would like to help them find a better again, a better partner than the Chinese Communist Party. Senator Kramer, thank you, sir. Thanks for the opportunity, always. And thanks for looking into this. It's very important, as you know. <laughs> thank right. you, sir.